All right, um, hello, welcome. If you are new here, my name is Zarina. I'm a graphic designer and I specialize in logo design and branding design. Um, today we have a new camera, which is really great because previous to this, um, the camera I had didn't have a viewfinder, so I would just kind of um, point it at my general direction and hope for the best. So this is a great improvement. And today we're gonna be rebranding, um, not, even, not even rebranding, we're gonna be branding a cannabis company from scratch. So logo, color palette, um, packaging, all that stuff. Cannabis was legalized in Massachusetts a few years ago, and um, it's kind of been interesting to see the different uh, shops that have popped up, the different dispensaries, and what they've done with their logos and their packaging. I have a couple of things here from Netta. Um, these are chocolate bar um, packaging. And these are kind of interesting because you know, if you have like a cannabis chocolate bar, you don't really want it to look like a chocolate bar because then you run the risk of like your kid eating it <laughs> by accident, um, and that would be bad because uh, they probably eat like the whole thing, um, or, or definitely more than they're supposed to. They're not supposed to have any because they're children. So I just I also thought the type was just really interesting on these. Um, so just a little inspiration. So the goal that I'm going into this with, um, and it might change along the way, is I want to create a brand that feels like really premium. I also had this idea to incorporate the 1920s, sort of elements of the 1920s, like aesthetic and energy into this branding. Um, so my reasoning for that, I have a couple reasons. We're in the 20s right now. It might feel a little more like 1918 now, but I'm trying to channel that roaring 20s kind of energy. Cannabis is still illegal in a lot of the, um, in a lot of the country. It's legal in Massachusetts, but there's lots of parts of the US where it's still illegal. It's still political. It's still kind of a taboo substance. And that is very reminiscent to me of like prohibition in the 20s. So I was thinking about different names uh, that I could use. Uh, some of them are 1920s inspired, some are not. So the two that I'm kind of leaning more towards are Cloud9 and um, Blind Tiger. I think there's some really cool imagery that could happen with Blind Tiger um, that I'm kind of interested in. I'm excited to kind of try illustrating more and see how that goes. And Cloud9 to me just, it just sounds like a really cool name and um, you know, you kind of get that double meaning of being really um, happy and positive, but also, you know, in a literal sense, um, these products make you high. So <laughs> it kind of works out. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump right into logo design. I think the first thing I'm gonna try is um, doing the logo for the blind tiger. I think that one's gonna be um, the most difficult and time consuming. Um, so I'm going to open up Illustrator and we can get going. Okay, so I think with the stripes, he starts looking a little like, a little like Tony the Tiger-ish. It just feels less cool. It starts to feel a little more like a children's um, mascot or something. So um, yeah, I don't think that the stripes are working. We have a couple different versions here. Um, to be honest, I don't think this is working. I don't think it looks very premium. I feel like it, it's like an it's like an okay logo, but it just doesn't look like what I'm going for. It feels too too cutesy and not like cool enough. But I'm glad I tried it. I'm glad I challenged myself to do an illustration, but um, I just don't think it's where it needs to be. So I'm gonna try working with the name Cloud9, and I'm just gonna see what happens. So it's actually a different day. I'm wearing a similar top, even though you can't really see it. Um, maybe I should zoom out a little. But I am wearing a similar shirt to kind of keep the illusion of continuity. So yeah, uh, I took some time away and I made some progress, um, but I haven't actually tackled the logo as much. I wanna do that 
on camera. Here is some of the progress I made. So off camera, I did some little cloud illustrations um, that I think I might try to incorporate into the logo or like the branding. Um, and I went through and I saved some different typefaces that I may want to use. So um, here are a few of them. Um, this one I believe is called Imperial, called um, Dystopian light i thought it was interesting because it had really rectangular ends just like a really simple sans serif monstra nova dunbar low um so this one's kind of fun it has a really short x height which usually i don't like but for some reason with this it feels kind of nice i think what i'm gonna go for boyfriend's going to the bathroom after doing some exploration of like the colors and the pattern i think what i'm gonna go for is like a really simple um logo mark and then just like kind of blow out some of the other branding elements um so i kind of want to keep it simple with the word mark one of my inspirations for this is glossier in terms of branding um they're definitely not super color colorful with that brand they pretty much only use pink um, but I like the idea of branding that feels really bright and pink and has a pretty like basic looking logo um, that's really versatile, but the branding elements are like really unique and interesting. Two of the color palettes I'm considering, um, you know, they kind of range from being like really, really bright to a little more on the muted side, but they're all like pretty colorful. I think the one that has the most promise to me is maybe this one here. Um, and I think maybe this one here. I think the the ones on the top and the bottom might be a little too much. Then a pattern that I'm kind of interested in utilizing is I was working on these really geometric patterns and they felt kind of art deco-y to me, especially with the um, gold kind of color. To me, what sets them apart is they're more, they're not as like symmetrical as a lot of art deco designs. Like when I think of art deco, I think of a lot of symmetry. And I kind of feel like this makes it feel a little bit more modern with how they're kind of like, it's a little bit funkier. So I think these have a lot of potential to inspire the packaging and then also maybe inspire the logo design a little bit. So I think I want to make a, like a nine that's a little bit on the art deco-y side. So I really like this. Uh, oh, why am I so low? Stand up straight. Do I need my chair up more? Oh, okay. It's really simple, like right? really geometric, but it still feels, it, it feels like it can live in that art deco world because it's like an art deco E9, but it's still really simple, so it feels modern. I like this. I'm gonna play around with some others, but I feel like we have a good contender here. It's a little thick here. It's kind of nice. Let's try out putting the logo in different colors, seeing what it looks like. I'll just start with, I'll just go down the line. So it's a little Barbie dream house, but maybe that will change. I think the orange is kind of weird with this one. But I was thinking something when I put this together. This looks good. 
good. Okay, so that's one. I, I do kind of wonder if this pink can go a little more... A little more pink and less nude because it doesn't feel like playful enough. There's something here that looks good. Like there's something about the orangey pink and the bright pink and the green. There's something there that works. And so I think what I'm gonna just do is like make a poster or something using those and like using different textures and just see like what happens. And maybe I use the pattern that I made, maybe I don't, I don't know, but like, I think I need to use it like really in practice to see if it works. So let's get the heck out of Illustrator. I got these really cool, while I'm waiting for Photoshop to open, I got these really cool field notes from, um, from field notes? I don't know what I was thinking I was gonna say. Aren't these cool? They have one for each, um, well, I'm not gonna adjust, I will not adjust the focus on this because I don't know if it'll ever adjust back. So I'll just hold these up to my face so you can see them. Um, but they're based on different national parks. And they come with, um, well, they don't come with, you can you have to buy these, but they have little pens. I'm not gonna focus, so. Okay, I think this is where these clouds can kind of come into play. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm not naming my artboards right now because I feel like being a little chaotic. battery died, so I got a white claw. It doesn't really go. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna hide the layer and do something else. So, um, some time has passed. <laughs> it's not really working for me. Something about the pink isn't really working. I like the idea of the collage kind of thing, but I just think, 
I'm losing the Art Deco inspiration and I just want to try something else. Okay, I really like this halftone texture kind of thing with the three different splotches. So for the strains, what I think I'm gonna do is name them after different prohibition drinks. So the ones I've thought of are Bee's Knees, um, French 75, which is my favorite cocktail. It's very delicious. Um, I'll have to look up more, but I think for now I, I'm gonna use Bee's Knees. I kind of like it when it's really big. I feel like that um, looks kind of cool. I really like this like texture, um, it's like glitter texture. Usually, I've used it before in other uh, designs, but I feel like I usually make it like a bright color or something. So it's kind of cool to see it like, it almost looks like silver, like silver glitter. I don't know if it's totally right for this, but I'm having fun playing around with it. So we'll see. So I played around with the poster a lot and I have some things to share. I eliminated the um, giant type in the background, kind of placed the type um, in this little bounding box. And I tried putting the logo in and that didn't really feel quite right. Something about the typeface wasn't really working for me. Um, but I tried it in different colors and I was really liking this sort of color combination. It feels almost a little like Eastery, but I feel like it works really well. It's very spring. Just a poster and the main part of the brand would probably be like the packaging, right? So I'm just gonna see, I think I'm gonna just try working on different potential walk-ups and see like what accompanying font could work with this. Um, and maybe that'll give me some ideas um, as to how to work on the packaging. So let's do that.
too. Okay, so the title right now is in Monstra Nova, which is the same type that the logo is in. So that could cause a problem, but I really like it. So, and I think it looks better than all the other ones. So maybe that's going to be the main typeface. Hold up, that looks so good. Okay, I really like that. This changes things. I don't think I'm gonna use that other font. I think I'm gonna lean into the Monster Nova. I think I need to try putting the logo in all caps because I feel like if the flavor, or like whatever, <laughs> it's not flavor, type, strain, whatever. If the strain of the product is in an all is in all caps and then the logo's in lowercase, I just feel like that's gonna look weird. And it's the same font, I feel like that's gonna look weird. So I feel like I should try putting the logo in all caps and let's we'll see what happens. I think we're on to something. <laughs> all right. Okay, cool. I think now I'm gonna take the pattern. I'm gonna take the logo. I'm gonna take the um, strain names and everything and I'm gonna throw it on some mock-ups and let's see how it goes. coming with me on this journey if you are if you've made it this far um this video though very fun was a very long process which is why i haven't posted anything in a really long time either way thank you for coming with me on this journey i hope you enjoyed i know i did um thank you and goodbye